What's up, everybody? It's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own custom drum machine with stock plugins in Studio One. All right, everyone, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions. Um, today we're gonna go through how to use um, one of my favorite plugins, period, but it's definitely my favorite plugin in Studio One. It's a stock plugin called Impact. Um, this is another thing when I was going around uh, learning Studio One, trying to get it work to work the way I wanted it to. You know, I watched a lot of um, beat making tutorials. You know, most of them are in FL Studio, and I would really, uh, I was really jealous of the. Um, the drum making capabilities inside Fruity Loops and how easy it was to get started and just throw samples, you know, at their built in sampler and, you know, just kind of kick out ideas real fast. Um, I had worked out a um, method like that with Machine because it's, um, it's an instrument that has 16 audio outs, you know, where I could throw 16 samples at it and edit it through MIDI, but it was really time consuming to set up. And then every time I wanted to switch my samples, it was just, um, you know, it's kind of discouraging and you don't want to get to that point where you're blocking your own creativity just because, you know, something might be hard to do just because you want to switch a kick drum and it's, it's, it's a pain. So, um, studio ones made that really easy with this, um, instrument. So I work from the mixer view. If you go ahead and click on the plus sign next to instruments, um, you go to impact. Okay. And I mean, this is super simple. All you do, um, I have my keyboard set up to the logic key commands. So if I press B, my bin comes up and all I have to do is go to my sample library. Okay. And just, you know, start throwing samples at this thing, you know, so, you know, obviously if you're looking to make your own, you know, custom kit, you're going to put a little bit more time into it. But for the purposes of this video, I was going to go through and, uh, and select, um, you know, some samples just so we could get going. I'm not even really previewing them right now. So we got some snares, we got some hats. Okay, that's weird. I'm glad I listened to that one. Okay. You know, you don't have to have four different types of hi-hats. It's just, you know, sometimes you might want a variation in things. Usually for this fourth row, I do like various percussions or like little vocal stabs. So now that you have your sound set up, you see how easy it is to just drag and drop onto the pads. It happens real fast. You put it together real quick. If you look here, you have the uh, the solo button, the mute button, and the output button. Now this is a um, multi timbral instrument. You know you can route each one of these pads out to a different output, which is what I do because that gives them their own mixer channel. So what you want to do is you just assign each one of these pads by left clicking on that drop down menu to their own output. And as you do that, you'll notice behind the VST in the mixer window, it just automatically opens up a track for each one of the inputs that you change, right? That's pretty awesome, okay? So here you have all your drums. All right. And if you kinda you know if 
okay, so here you have all your drums. The next thing you want to do is you want to go, you know, to add tracks, the symbol right here. You just got to add one track. You can name it Impact or Drums or whatever you want to name it. Okay. Left click, select Impact. Now this channel will trigger these drums. So what you can do if you're, you know, really stuck on that, um, on wanting to work in step sequencer mode, it's very popular for, you know, hip hop and dance music. It's, it, it's easy. It's not like, um, you know, if you got into music from just using computers, like I have, it's, a it's a linear way of thinking. It's, it's not like playing an instrument and sometimes it can make more sense. So if you just open up, you create a MIDI region and you open it up, right? It's going to start out with you, with just your piano roll right here. And you're not going to be able to see really what you're doing. But if you look at this, it's kind of like a, it looks like a snare drum. Click on that snare drum icon and now it'll bring up each one of your samples. So each one of these rows will trigger each one of these samples. So like I said, if you really want to do the whole step sequencer thing, an easy way to accomplish that is, you know, just set up a four bar loop, add in, add in a whole note, drag it out and make it and make it the entire, the entire length of the loop, right? Now, if you hold down alt and click and drag, it'll copy that. And if you just copy that to each one of your samples, you'll see you'll get, you know, this this four bar held note for each one. Now, if you play it, it's going to sound retarded. That's all of them playing at one time, right? And it's only for one note. So if you go ahead and you set the grid to eighth notes, you know, that's that that's what your typical step sequencer is going to play. Go ahead and select all of the notes. Right click, go to musical functions, click split it grid. OK, now you've got all of your notes split at the grid. But if you play, it's just going to play, all, you know, all of these samples at the same time, every eight notes. You know, that's not a step sequencer. That's not really going to help you. So you got to go a little bit further, take it to the next step. So hi, go ahead and highlight everything. If you pay attention to your piano roll, you've got these tools up here. You know, when you go over them, it says split tool two. What does that two mean? What does that three mean? That's the numbers on the keyboard. You know, you can get faster with this. So number five, the M, that's your mute tool. If you highlight all these notes and click them, it mutes all of the notes, right? So you go back to the arrow, you got nothing going on. So if you wanted to build a drum pattern really quickly with, with a kit that you've already set up, it's really easy to do. You know, you go ahead. All right, I like this snare, right? So we'll go ahead and drop our snare and watch how quick it comes together. You can also click and hold and drag over an area. Okay. And that'll get you your straight hi-hat run going. All right, that's really loud. You're killing me, hi-hat.
Now you can kind of um, use the other techniques that I, that I showed you in the piano roll um, in the tutorial that was about hi-hat rolls. You know, you can still, you know, even though you've got all these muted, you could still use those same principles. So say you wanted to, you know, make your hi-hats have a little bit more bounce, you know, you just go and reset the grid to a different note value. Select split it grid, you know, and now you can make your hi-hats bounce before the snares, you know, stuff like that. You know. Maybe change this to a slower triplet. Something like this. Yeah, and as you can see, you know, going back to the mixer, you have, you know, you have all your tracks laid out. You can go ahead and highlight them. Send them to your drum bus. It's real easy if you have your sends already set up to go ahead and go ahead and put effects on them. And you see how quick that comes together. I use Studio One because I like how it can kind of conform to what you want to do. There's really nothing this program can't do um, if you just if you just take a little bit of time to you know to learn it, and um, you can get it to fit your workflow really fast if you know what you want to do. Um, you know, I, you know, there's not a lot of tutorials right now up for Studio One, and I always see people in the tutorials like, man, you know, I had Studio One, but I just, you know, I can't, I get so lost, I can't make a beat in it, you know, it, the, you know, so I had to go back to, you know, using this DAW or that DAW, and, you know, it, it, it that kind of messed me up because this is, the, you know, I've used, I've used Logic, I, I've used Pro Tools, I've used SL Studio, and I, you know, I think this is the easiest one to use. So I figured, you know, I'll just keep on dropping these tutorials and, you know, help anybody out who wants to learn. This is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions. If this video helped you out, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit a like button, drop me a comment, and let me know what y'all want to see next. Thank you.